Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads. In this video, we're going to be continuing our journey to cast legitimate urethane skateboard parts at home. I've been working on bushings because they're the least complicated urethane part that can go into a skateboard, and I did some preliminary tests doing open air casting, and the results were pretty good. But to get truly good results, to get urethane that's free of bubbles where we can actually take advantage of the material properties, we need to cast the urethane under pressure. So I modified a Harbor Freight pressure pot so that I could use it for castings. Well, the last of the upgrades for that pot came in. The newest component I added is this air regulator. It's actually a regulator that's meant to be used in line if you're using air powered tools, but it's super small and compact and shiny. The way the regulator is oriented, the pressure gauge is upside down, but it's so much more simple than the previous one and all the plumbing is out of the way of the clamp knobs. So it doesn't matter what orientation the lid is in when I go to put it on the pot. I don't have to worry about my clamp handles hitting my plumbing and ultimately it's a much more pleasant ergonomic tool to use. And the thread sealant is cured, so it's time to put this setup to the test. And in order to do that, we're gonna need a mold. I got really excited after the success of the test cast in the last video, where we got that sample of bubble-free urethane. Probably a little overexcited. So when I went to design a mold, this is what I came up with, and then 3D printed. On the right, there are two halves of the buck, or the object I'm gonna be casting, is a set of four bushings, along with a urethane reservoir, a runner to allow the liquid rubber to flow to the bushings, and vents to allow air to escape and hopefully cut down on bubbles. I also printed a negative of one half of the mold, which includes all kinds of bumps and ridges for registration that should keep my mold halves aligned. And I quickly 3D printed a box so that everything fits cleanly together. Because of some of the complexities of the shape, I decided to print the main buck in two parts. So to start off, I joined them together with some super glue. I'm trying to get a nice finish on these, so I sanded the buck and the mold negative to get them nice and smooth. Then I hit them with a few coats of primer to help fill in the layer lines from printing. And here they are. The walls of the casting box were really thin and I was worried about leaks, so I used some packing tape to wrap it up just to keep it sealed. I slid the mold half negative into the casting box, mixed up some silicone. I'm using Smooth On Sort of Clear 37, mostly because it's what I have around. I end up being pretty happy that I use this because, I mean, it looks cool. I poured my silicone over my printed negative. And then I moved it into the pressure pot, clamped down the lid, and pressurized the tank. I've been doing my castings at about 45 or 50 PSI, and that's been working really well for me. Aside from an occasional surface bubble, I've been getting really clear castings. Once the silicone had cured, I cracked the pot back open and pulled out the mold. And oh man, that looks great. It is such a huge contrast to the one that was cast in the open air that was full of bubbles. This one is crystal clear, with that one little exception. Next, I pulled the mold half out of the box and cleaned up any overspill with a razor. And that looks sweet. Now we need to make the other half of the mold. So I started by inserting the buck of our bushings into the half that I already cast. I used a bit of dowel to prod and pull the silicone until the buck was seated cleanly in the mold. Then I put our half mold and buck into another casting box and pushed it down flat. Silicone doesn't stick to much, but it will bond to other silicone like the devil. So I mixed up some mold release using plain dish soap and isopropyl alcohol. This ends up not working out. The mixture has worked for me in the past, so I don't really know what went wrong here, but I end up losing my nicely designed parting line and all those little details that I had in place for registration. More on that in a bit. Then I mixed and poured the silicone for the second half of our mold. Dropped it into the pot and pressurized. When it was done curing, this is what I got. Looks clean. 
I pulled it out of the mold box, and since my mold release didn't work, I had to carefully cut a new parting line. This was tough, because the shape we're casting has a lot of weird internal features, but with a lot of gentle coaxing, I was able to get it to work. Next up, I cut some pieces of poster board to brace the sides of the mold. Then I wrapped some rubber bands around to keep everything sealed up nicely. I mixed up a batch of urethane. Poured it into the mold until it was full and there was some urethane coming up out of my vents. Put the mold on my tray, the tray in the pot, closed, clamped, and pressurized. A couple hours later, I depressurized the pot and cracked it open. Oh, that looks so cool. Look at him. Sweet. I pulled the mold apart, and... <laughs> oh my god, they're perfect. All that's left is to cut the bushings free of the sprues and runners, and clean up some flashing. And look at that. Perfect, bubble-free castings. I was so excited that I immediately mixed another batch of urethane and cast a second set. In this one, a bubble got stuck below one of the vents. It might have been because the pot life of the urethane is so short. It might also be because of my mold design. So I'm down one orange bushing, but I still have three perfect ones. And seven is more than enough bushings for a setup, so I let them finish curing for 24 hours, and then I put them on a board. I'm putting them on the same cruiser that I used to test the first batch of bushings I cast. This way, I'll be able to compare and contrast how the new ones ride with the new pressure casting method. They ride great. Seriously. Great. I'm using that same urethane, which is an ADA hardness, which is softer than I'm used to riding. And if you remember, that last set of bushings that I made was full of bubbles, so they were really soft and squishy. They were a little twitchy, and I never really felt confident riding them. This new set, on the other hand, even though they're a little softer than what I'm used to, it only took a couple minutes for me to get the hang of them. I did feel confident riding them, and after a little while, I stopped thinking about them altogether. I barely even noticed they were there. I am so happy with how this set came out. They ride great, they look awesome, they're super day glow neon. I don't know if that's coming up on the camera, but like, in the sunlight, they're kind of hard to look at. And since I was able to ride around without thinking about them, I'm gonna leave them in my board. Yep, these are gonna be the main set of bushings in my cruiser board, at least for a while.
So, all in all, a resounding success of a project. You gotta love these ones, guys. It just makes you feel good when things work out this well. There are two directions I wanna go from here. The first is to keep making bushings, but to decomplicate the process and to make the castings more accurate. The set of molds that I made in this video are cool and they work, but they were crazy to make. And eventually, I want for you guys at home to be able to do this fairly easily, so I wanna come up with a process that's simpler and more precise. The second direction I wanna go, especially after I get that precision nailed down, is cores and wheels. And yes, all of those things are already in the works. So, if you haven't subscribed, I don't know what's stopping you, you should go ahead and do that so you can see me make better bushings and wheels and cores and all kinds of other DIY board sport stuff. Hop on aboard this train, we have a good time. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down below, and until next time, I'll see you soon. And until next time, I'll see you soon. I don't think that's how I want to do that. Oh, I lost my bushings. Dang it.